Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel, this is The Method on Speaking. So, today we are talking about shields because we are the cool kids who love historical weapons and armour. Alright, Governor. It is important to say that the ultimate most effective shield doesn't exist. The effectiveness of a shield very much depends on what it has been used for and when, in what situation. Is it a pitched battle? The larger shields will usually do a better job at keeping you alive, although again, a mounted soldier and an infantryman will have different needs. Is it a duel? Then you won't need something to protect you from missile fire and you'll only have to deal with one opponent at a time. A very different combat scenario. Are you in a civilian self-defense situation? Then in that case a smaller, easier to carry shield will be the best option. Because you can't really go around and wear or bring with you a massive battlefield shield in town. For social reasons, sometimes for legal reasons and generally speaking because it will be too cumbersome that would impede your everyday activities. Oh, and by the way, this video is not sponsored by Starbucks. Still good though. At number 10, we've got the Dueling Shields. Okay, so this is also called the Long Shield, and it's a very interesting shield also because it's rather obscure. I mean, if you're a history buff, you will have definitely encountered this in the treaties, in medieval treatises. But most people, you know, when they think of a shield, of course, they think of the Roman shield, they think of medieval shields, but they don't really think of this. Now, this was used during the Middle Ages during what were called judicial duels. So let's say they've got two wronged parties and they decide to have a duel to see who was right. They had specialized shields in some kind countries, for example Germany, that could be used for jewels. Now, you see the shield used as a the only weapon gripped with two hands. You were supposed to start most of the times with the shield in combination with a weapon, it being a sword or a mace. But let's say that you decided to throw the mace at your opponent and you finish the replacement, then the shield was designed in a way that it could be used as, as the sole weapon. Of course, it can't be used for civilian self-defense, too big, can't carry it around. In a battlefield, yes, you could use it, but I don't see it as being as sturdy and as resistive as shields that are designed for battle. And even though it's designed for a duel, I don't think it's optimized for duel. And there are other shields that you will see down this list that will prove more effective. At number nine, we've got the Viking shield. And this is also often seen as the round shield, but there are other kinds of round shield that don't really qualify as Norse. But in this case, we're gonna look at the shield that is centered gripped. It's got a metal boss in the center. It's normally made of wood, covered in leather and um, oftentimes when we see in video games these shields shown having a metal rim and I'm not saying that that didn't happen it probably did but perhaps it wasn't as common as we imagine I would imagine that rawhide rim would also be more common and also they you usually just see the naked wooden planks that's not something you would see on a real Viking shield uh, they were decorated they were covered up in linen in rawhide and whatnot which is anyways the case in the majority of shields in history but anyways this is a very effective shield and it's interesting and if you want to see how to these shields are used and the sort of techniques you should definitely check out Roland Verzeka. I have met is a German youtuber who specializes on the usage of Viking shields and generally speaking shields a sword and shield um, but to cut the long story short it's as I said it's centered bossed and this means that this shield has very very specific techniques that involve the idea of gripping it from the center allowing you to have greater reach but also at the same time it allows you to use it in a shield wall it's an overall very light but still very resistive and very effective kind of shield and I think it's also really really badass now when we think of Frankish shields so the shields used in Francia uh, by the Franks yes they had shields that were very similar to the Viking shield so again centered boss centered grip and circular but sometimes in some iconography we also see a specific characteristic of these sort of shields is the fact that some of these shields would have been domed now what is an advantage of a domed shield versus a flat shield well first and foremost a domed surface will encourage weapons to glance off when they uh, come in contact with your shield and whether it be a uh, hand weapon whether it be a spear point or whether it be 
be an arrow or any sort of missile weapon when you encounter a domed conical surface it will be harder for the strike for the missile weapon to stick and to deal more damage because the force will be naturally dispersed and that's why I think it is a superior design then number seven we have got the famous Roman rectangular scutum and I'd like to underline rectangular because the Romans did have other kinds of shields and this is the typical imperial or perhaps late Republican but definitely imperial kind of shield with this curved surface and uh, that sort of enwraps the uh, user and protects him not only from the front but also to a certain extent on the sides. It is again a centered boss and centered gripped shield but it has a different grip. The grip is in fact oriented in a horizontal way differently from the sort of vertical grips that we see on Viking shields for example. And this is a specific choice because the shield is massive and such a big shield if you had to just hold it in front of you with your arm fully extended you wouldn't last longer than a few minutes but the Romans engineered this grip so that it's you basically carry it like a briefcase and oftentimes when we look at Roman iconography we see that they did uh, hold it close to the body and I can understand why I've tried it I've owned I own quite a few replicas and it is a lot less tiring and it does protect really really well but one of the main advantages of this shield is the fact that it sort of it works very well in a formation. If you can build a testudo with it, you can do very very effective shield walls that protect your soldiers in a better way than any, any Anglo-Saxon or Viking shield wall, wall would have worked. That, that's just my opinion of course. But it does not function well for self-defense in civilian context because you just can't walk around with such a massive shield. I mean the Romans themselves when they were in enemy territory definitely they would carry their shields ready to deploy them for combat, holding them with the left hand. But when they were in March and in possibly in safe territory we could say so in the provinces of Rome they would just wear them on the back as you would wear a backpack inside of a waterproof leather cover so uh, these were not shields that were easy to carry but would it function in a duel I'm gonna say that yes a Roman scutum works well in a duel but it's probably not the best option it's not easy to maneuver a, uh, a Roman scutum it takes a lot of training and most importantly there are only a certain amount of things that you can do and all these things will work perfectly enough for me but I don't think it's the most optimized uh, shield that you can use in a duel even though gladiatorial combat featured um, rectangular scuta but probably not the best now at number six we've got the medieval rotella now what you see in these images is a typical Italian northern Italian uh, medieval rotella so round shield now here's the thing that you might ask well, first and foremost it does not have a boss so how is that not a minus why isn't the viking shield here instead of the rotella well it's just my personal preference and i'm gonna defend my point but if you don't agree with what i'm about to say then feel free to consider the list switched with the rotella at number nine and the viking shield at number six because the reason why i put the rotella here is because it's a strapped shield it's strapped to your arm which is a typical thing of medieval shields and i personally prefer strapped shields over centered bossed or center gripped shields and that's just my personal preference I think they uh, one of the reasons is that the reason why most medieval armies switched to um, strapped shields um, which already existed in the past the Greeks used them and even the Romans used them in gladiatorial combat thing number one this shield has one advantage it really isn't tiring at all because you are basically wearing it so it's the fact that you are wearing the shield means that you can have the shield on you all day ready to defend yourself and it's not going to tie you down. Now you will lose some range given because with a centered boss grip you do get extra range and easier to move around. There are still many things that you can do with a strapped shield. But what about the, the, the lacking of the boss? Well the fact that it's strapped means that your hand doesn't need the hole in the center of the shield to place a, a grip. The main reason why there is a boss in the, in the center of Viking shields for example. But with this shield being strapped you don't really need. Although I gotta say that it was a northern Italian thing. It was a northern Italian choice to not put the, the boss in the center because you still can place it if you want because you just might want to have some extra deflecting capability. Some countries did. The fact that northern Italians didn't 
to me tells me that probably the shields worked well anyways. So you might think why is the isn't the Frankish domed shield better than the Rotella? Well, because the Frankish shield is centered boss, centered gripped. It kind of gives, gives me the idea that a round Rotella in the Italian style would be such an easier shield to learn how to use and to be effective with that I put it here number six because I think you can use it for duels very well. It functioned for warfare and I think that Rotella can do that very well. Now at number five we've got the Scottish Taj. Now the Scottish Taj is basically very similar to a Rotella and it tends to be smaller sometimes and just big enough to cover your forearm although I do believe that there are slightly bigger versions as well but what's interesting about the Scottish Targe is first they, that the Highlanders that were using these shields that are very very well made by the way usually covered both back and front sometimes very highly decorated and all they would add sometimes a center spike which I think would be interesting you know putting in a little bit of extra flair during your combat situation, something that your opponent needs to be consider needs to consider another possible attack. Because we did say that shields are used of course to punch. You can attack a an opponent and if there is a spike there, I'm gonna say why not? I don't think it's gonna increase that much the weight. The shield is already rather small. So I think that that's a good add-on. Also um, hold a uh, sort of pointed dagger on the same arm, uh, on the same hand that is gripping the shield to get again an extra attacking angle and the, and the Scottish Targe is perfectly designed for that and I think makes it very very effective shield to use in a, a dual scenario, I think it's excellent. Uh, it could work for personal defense, at the end of the day it's not too big. Um, I'm not sure about, sure about its effectiveness in battle as compared to bigger and more protective shields though, but still it gets numbered five because of all these ingenious uh, add-ons that you can put and that people did put and use together with the Scottish Targe. Now at number four we've got the Buckler. Given the Buckler, I'm not really sure if it qualifies as a shield but it definitely evolved from a shield. So what a Buckler is if you look at it, it's very similar to the boss of the shield. It's as if you're only holding the boss with the grip. Now some were made entirely of metal, other would have just the center made of metal and, and then some wood. Again the, grip could, the grips could be wooden, could be metal but at the end of the day a Buckler is a fantastic option for dueling because it's quick, it protects your hand and it does a pretty good job of protecting you regardless of the fact that it might look small and it, one advantage that it has is that it does not block your vision so if you're an expert duelist I think you could opt for a buckler and sword combination because if you know what you're doing the buckler provides just enough protection to protect your hand protect your striking hand and striking forearm and it just makes you an effective duelist it just protects the lines of defense without impeding you and there are medieval manuscripts that talk and teach you all the different separate techniques because a shield like this even though it might look it's very very small and might not be as defensive there are so many techniques that you can apply it makes it a very very good choice for a duel and also it's excellent it's probably the best one for personal self-defense because it's something that you can literally wear you can wear it on your belt and you can do it together with your sidearm your, your sword and you can go on taking care of your daily activities as you would normally and you won't even notice there and then if a group of bandits choose you as their target then there you go you've got your sword and your buckler which, which might give you that extra advantage that you need yes a scutum would protect you more but you can't again you know going around with bigger shields as we said would be a problem in a medieval context but going around just wearing a buckler and a sword is excellent I think so it's number one for the duelings aspect and for battle if you are like a heavy infantry man no, you don't want a buckler because, you know, if enemy archers start shooting at you, what are you going to do with that? But, bear with me for a moment, if you are an archer, you can literally operate your weapon, do what you need to do, but if it does happen that an enemy infantry or enemy cavalry come, well an archer also owns sword, a sword and they would use it to defend, they could be good swordsmen as well, and, the, and, and you can do all you need to do as an archer while wearing a buckler. You can't say the same with a massive shield for example, although we will talk about Genoese crossbowmen in a moment, but you know an archer operating his weapon, I think having a buckler on his belt is a nice add-on 
it being a useful shield in all three aspects, it gets number four on this list. Now, number three is the Kite Shield. The Kite Shield is an incredible shield. It's basically an evolution of the Round Shield. It's basically a round shield that it flares down to grant more protection to the legs of the wearer. It's a shield that when you're wearing full plate armor, maybe it is redundant, I, I understand that. But it's here on number three because I think it's such a well-designed shield. It's strapped to your arm and you actually wear it with an extra leather strap that goes over your shoulder. So you can literally wear it as you're marching or you're mounting, you, you know, you're on your mount. And, and that's one of the good things about this shield. It's good for both infantry and cavalry. You can't say that of that many shields. I mean, scutum is perfect for infantry, but you can't use a scutum for a rectangular scutum, at least for cavalry. And, and then again, a buckler for a knight on, on top of a horse. I just don't see it. That a, uh, a kite shield can be used by infantrymen and by cavalry. And I think that that's the reason why it gets to number three here. It covers you well. It covers just enough. It's not as heavy as a, as a scutum and it's strapped. You can wear it. It's it's an excellent shield. Now, number two is the palvis or palvese, pavese, Pavis, however you want to pronounce it. Now, this is an interesting piece of kit that was very famously used by the Genoese crossbowmen. So, a Palvis is what you'd normally call in role-playing games a tower shield, although I suppose that even a Roman scutum could be considered a tower shield, but this is it. So it's a medieval shield that was usually very big, although smaller versions existed, and that's why it's number two here, I'll get to that in a moment. But it's a very large shield that is basically going to function as a barrier, a protective barrier that is going to protect mostly ranged units and troops while they are reloading. This is what they're generally Crisponum most famously did, but also Milanese Crisponum. I mean, generally speaking, Northern Italian ranged troops would use a palvese um, as a barrier, standing barrier that you would just thrust on the ground that did have some specific, specifically designed uh, spikes that would go at the bottom of the shield and you could just thrust it on the ground and it would stand there as a um, protective barrier as you are reloading. Now, of course, that makes it a very, very specialized shield, but smaller versions existed and therefore I think the palvese is a shield that can be used in a whole variety of situations so many people just imagine it as a standing barrier shield that is super heavy and can only be used by crossbowmen but that's not the case they wear smaller pavese uh, that could be used uh, for hand-to-hand -hand combat and I really like the shape it's um, it's big but not too big and it has this massive central rim that I believe sort of does what ancient shield bosses did but even in a better way and it covers the entirety of the shield so no matter where the uh, strike comes from and when it's going to attack it will most likely hit either the rim of the shield or the center ridge of the shield and that is why I think it has an excellent design. It's a cool shield, it's beautiful, it's effective, it's multi-purpose battlefield shield that can also be used for dual, not for civilian self-defense, but still a very, very good shield. Now at number one, and this is my personal favorite, is the heater shield. Now the heater shield is basically the smaller triangular version of the kite shield. You have to imagine it like this. You have the round shield, the round shield evolves, flares out towards the bottom, evolves into the kite shield, but as time progresses and you reach the late medieval period and armor starts to develop, then you don't need as big of a shield. You have got full leg plate harness and therefore the shield sort of starts being reduced again but it keeps that triangular shape. Now that's interesting because a triangular shape and particularly in the form of a um, heater shield allows you to do so much. It's a an effective shield, it protects you from lance strikes, it protects you from missile weapons, it can be used to attack. I mean imagine being hit in the eye with a triangular bottom of, of one of these heater shields. I'm, I'm sure that's not pleasant. But interestingly enough, the reason why the shield is number one, the grip arrangements for a heater shields are amazing. You can use it strapped to your arm. You can use it strapped in a little bit of a weird way if you want to use it more to punch and attack, like as we can see in this in this images here. But you can also use it as a centered boss shield because of the um, crossed straps arrangement. And we have proof for this. So 
if you have a heater shield in your hand you can literally use it and customize the grip not only according to your own perf preference but even according to what's going on in that duel the person you're fighting with you can freaking switch mid combat and that's something that I'm going to say no other shield allows you to do. It's the configuration we see on the historical heater shields allows you for a lot of customization in the way you want to use them. I think it's the perfect dimension for the shield because it's good for battle, good for joust, good for dueling, and you might even argue good for personal defense. I mean, again, maybe not many people carry them around, but if you think about it, I mean, you could if you wanted to. It's again, you can't really say the same for a massive Palvis, um, but a heater shield I think is the perfect shield to be, it allows it to be used in the majority of scenarios where you can say, yeah, that's gonna be a good shield and it's gonna do its job well. But of course, this is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what's your list. I will definitely be reading those and looking forward to your lists in the comments below. All right, number ones. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're still not yet a member of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Valete. Well,